Hi there, I'm Marcus Hutzel, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made my teleprompter for basically free. And you can make one for free too, it just depends on what you have lying around the house. And the way this all works is in conjunction with your smartphone and a free app called the Parrot Teleprompter app. When it's all said and done, your smartphone will sit down below on this little shelf, while the Parrot Teleprompter app reverses the text so that when it's reversed again in the glass, you can read it. If you don't know what a teleprompter is, why are you here? Just kidding, glad to have you. If you're not familiar, a teleprompter is a device or system that projects words onto a screen or glass that sits in front of the camera lens so that you can read words like from a script while still looking into the camera. You know, like TV news anchors. I'm Ron Burgundy? But anyway, onwards. The reason I made this video and the reason you may want a teleprompter is so that you can record more than a single line of dialogue at a time without having to memorize an entire paragraph word for word, or having to do a bunch of jump cuts in your video. And even though jump cuts have become something that we're used to and that have become normal here on YouTube, too many of them can be distracting. However, I also find they can sometimes hold your attention longer because it gives you a visual change, something to pay attention to. Despite these normal season benefits of being able to just edit and make a bunch of cuts and post to YouTube, depending on the type of video you're making and whom you're making it for, too many cuts may look unprofessional and may be completely undesired from your clients. So you may need to think of a way to read your lines in one take, and either you have to memorize an entire script word for word, line for line, or build yourself a teleprompter. All right, let's get this thing built. Here's what you're gonna need. A black three ring binder, or even regular cardboard will work fine as well. A piece of glass, black gaff tape or something similar, a piece of a wire hanger, this part, not this part. Some binder clips, these are optional but good to have. Coffee, very important ingredient. And the rest of the supplies are in the garage because we're not gonna build this here at my desk, so let's go to the garage. All right, so messy garage and uh, terrible lighting, but it's the perfect place to make a mess and get this teleprompter built, so let's get our supplies together. I like a clean work surface, so I started by clearing off my workbench, then setting out all my supplies. Then I got a cheap black one inch three ring binder, which works okay, mainly because it has a built in hinge point already. Our glass, which is going to reflect our text. I found an old picture frame I wasn't using and took the glass out of it. And this piece of glass measures five inches by seven inches. Now, real teleprompters use a specialty glass called beam splitter glass, which is different than your regular piece of glass. Beam splitter glass is almost like a two-way mirror, so it's going to give you a very clear reflection of your text while still allowing the camera to film through it. However, since I really didn't want to spend any money on this project, I just used regular glass. Just keep in mind that regular glass is going to give you a bit of a doubling effect on the text, like you can see here. But for me, I found that even though the text was slightly doubled, I was still able to read the text just fine. So I continued. Black gaff tape. Now this isn't something the average person is going to have lying around, but since I'm already in audiovisual production, I already had it. And this is gaff tape, not duct tape. Duct tape is shiny and a lot stickier and it's going to possibly reflect light back up into your lens. You can pick this up on Amazon, two inch roll for about $17. And you can use any other black tape that you have, I just recommend that it has a matte finish, not glossy. And to be honest, you could use cardboard for this whole thing and just paint it black when you're done. A few binder clips, but I found these weren't ultimately necessary, but good to have. Tools, of course. I used a simple razor blade knife and a pair of pliers from good old Home Depot. Our piece of wire hanger, which you can cut simply by bending it back and forth with that pair of pliers. I'll show you later how we'll use this. And as Norm Abram always said, safety first. And there's no more important safety rule than to wear these, safety glasses. I started by drilling out the rivets, but I discovered you can usually just pull this thing out of the binder without power tools. I measured out a rectangle slightly smaller than the 5x7 piece of glass and just cut it out. This way the glass will overlap the binder a bit and give me a good place for securing it with tape. I wanted to use the hinged part of the binder as it came, so I just kind of eyeballed how much I wanted left on the bottom where my iPhone would sit and cut off the excess. 
So keep in mind that the bottom shelf actually needs to be pretty short, otherwise it's actually going to be in frame. So it's really just dependent on the lens you want to use and the field of view that that lens gives you. It's going to take a little testing before you tape everything up to determine if any of the tape, the bottom shelf, or any of the sides are in frame. Since I normally film with no wider than a 24 millimeter lens, that gives me roughly a 73 degree field of view. So for that millimeter of lens, or that field of view, I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than a 5x7 piece of glass. But, as you can see, it's not a problem. Then, I added a top piece, and just used gaff tape to tape it on. And by using the built-in hinge, which creates your bottom and your angled piece, adding a top piece creates a Z shape that would form the bottom shelf, the angled piece with the glass, and a top piece that will help block out light coming from anywhere over top of the camera. So once I had my basic Z shape, from there I just kind of knelt down to about the level I would be at when I'm sitting at my desk. I didn't measure out a specific angle, I just made sure that the reflected text was easily readable and in line with the lens. And here's where that piece of wire hanger comes into play. Just take your small piece of wire hanger and bend the ends so that they line up with the bottom and the angled piece of your teleprompter. And you can either use binder clips, gaff tape, or both to hold the piece of wire hanger in place so that the hinge and therefore the angle do not move. Once I had my angle correct, and to fill in the empty spaces left by the Z shape, I just cut out some triangular pieces of cardboard to add to the sides, cover them in gaff tape, and taped it all together. Since the teleprompter needs to sit at roughly the same height as the camera, I need to either sit it on something or mount it on something. I wanted the option to mount the teleprompter on a tripod, but when I'm at my desk, I just wanted to be able to set it down and get going quickly, and not waste an entire second tripod. And it just worked out that a standard 4x4 piece of lumber was the perfect height for the teleprompter to sit in front of my camera, which sits on this Manfrotto pixie tripod. I also just covered the 4x4 in more gaff tape. To add the functionality to be able to mount this to a tripod, I took some JB Weld, which is an epoxy-like glue that you can pick up at any hardware store, and I attached a standard 1 quarter 20 nut to a washer, like this. Then I just cut a small hole in the bottom of the teleprompter shelf so that I could take this nut and recess it into that hole. But since this center washer sticks out and can make things unlevel, I just added more washers around and taped them all on to make basically a flat surface again on the bottom. Now with a quarter 20 recessed nut, I can attach any tripod plate I want and mount it to any tripod. So really that's pretty much it. You start off with your Z shape, put your glass in the middle, fill in the sides with some more cardboard and gaff tape, and verify that the lens can't see any of the supporting structure. So I would keep this edge and shelf as small as possible. If I were gonna do this again with the same like 24 millimeter, 73 degree field of view uh, lens, then I would probably go for an eight by 10 piece of glass to make this whole thing a little bit bigger, but it's compact, it works, my lens can't see any of the supporting structure, and we're good to go. And that's pretty much it. It's something you can do at home. Now, let's go back to the office to finish up, but I'm a little bit dirty, so let's get changed. So if you're struggling to get through the topic and get to your point, or if you're like me and would like to get your thoughts down and typed out before you start rolling on camera, a teleprompter is probably the way to go. You can do it for cheap. You probably already have a smartphone, so all you need are a few household items you most likely have lying around. And it also took me a few times of using a teleprompter to know that one little extra tool would help and that is the Parrot Padcaster Remote. Got this for 20 bucks on B&H Photo. And you know, Parrot does make an entire teleprompter kit that attaches to the front of the camera lens, but I just didn't want to attach something to the front of my lens. I just didn't want that weight on there. So I just got the remote. So just get the remote and use your smartphone and it will make this a lot easier without having to reach up towards your smartphone towards the camera and you know, try to scroll forwards or backwards and accidentally move the camera because that happened to me. You can move the camera, you can move the framing and it, you may lose focus. So you can do it with the remote in your hand the entire time. It is a bit clicky, so uh, another person, I'll try to link the video, recommended using just your thumbnail and barely, barely pressing, and that has worked well because my microphone is right below me, and if I were to be clicking really hard, starting and stopping, you'd probably hear that. And jump cuts are okay. They're going to happen from time to time. I had to do one just then because I kind of forgot to say this part, forgot to put it in the script. I wanted to go back and add it to show you that they are okay. We're going to mess up. We're going to have to cut in, and most of us are not professional TV anchors, so it's okay. And if you don't think that this cheap little homemade teleprompter works very well, I've been using it this entire time. 
uh, despite the jump cuts here and there. Here, hang on, I'll show you. Get my uh, other camera here. All right, so here's my teleprompter setup for that last little scene. I've got everything on a single tripod. I've got my microphone, the teleprompter, and my camera all on one tripod. There's the glass, there's the text. So you can see what I was just speaking right there. My iPhone is right there, and I've had this in my hand the whole time. So the additional things that I've added is I've taken a, uh, a drum hardware clamp, a Yamaha clamp, and just added this extra piece of tubing, which is actually just a piece of a camera tripod, so I can put the teleprompter on top of it. So, you know, got my mic on this other little arm, so it's one single unit of a stand, and that's all I have to take with me if I want this to be remote. All right, so let me show you how this is kind of put together. I've got my iPhone there with the script on it, and I've got the teleprompter mounted on its Arca Swiss plate with the quick release plate on this other head right here. So it's easily removable. There's the Arca Swiss plate over there. Bob's your uncle. That's about it. And this is another reason that the remote is really good to have because trying to reach up and move the script, you can do, but if it's all on one stand like this, you're going to wiggle the camera. So for me, a teleprompter allows me to get my thoughts down before I go to record them and helps me get through the content much quicker once the camera is rolling. And I think that's it. Good luck, have fun.